Hello everyone, Infinite Movie Recaps here. Today, I'm going to show you an action and thriller movie titled Shooter. There will be spoilers ahead. Now sit back, relax and enjoy. The movie begins as US Special Forces Sniper Bob Lee Swagger and his fellow soldier, Donnie Fenn, are on a mission in Ethiopia. They are tasked to protect a US convoy and while waiting, they chat and Donnie starts remembering his wife Sarah while looking at her photograph. Their mission doesn't go as planned as they get attacked by enemy combatants. While Swagger manages to kill most of the men, his friend Donnie gets shot. Swagger contacts the base for backup, but his superiors decline the request, saying they are in a dangerous territory where the US Army should not operate. Swagger uses his sniping skills and survives the attack, but unfortunately, his friend isn't so lucky and he dies. A few years later, Swagger now lives in the mountains. One day, Colonel Isaac Johnson and his men arrive at Swagger's home, and Johnson shows him his Medal of Honor to reignite his lost patriotism. Johnson tells him they have credible intelligence about a planned murder attempt on the president and have turned to Swagger for assistance. He also tells him that according to the information, the shot will be fired from a distance of over a mile, a shot that only a few individuals can make. He then tells Swagger that the president will visit three cities and they want Swagger to visit each location and assess prospective sniper locations. Swagger refuses to participate, but Johnson's persistence makes him change his mind and he agrees to help them. After they leave, Swagger starts his preparation and tries to test his beyond a mile shot. He manages to make the shot and then prepares for his departure. Swagger scouts the locations of possible attacks and after a thorough inspection, he concludes that Philadelphia is the ideal location for the attack. Johnson then invites Swagger to help them find the sniper, so he shows up on the day of the president's speech. Swagger starts looking for the assassin. After a while, he manages to pinpoint the sniper's location and asks Officer Timmons, who is with him, to go and capture him immediately. However, Timmons instead shoots Swagger from behind and he falls out of the window. Meanwhile, the sniper also shoots, but the bullet hits the Ethiopian archbishop, who was standing right next to the president. Johnson and his men stage the whole scene as if Swagger was the one who wanted to kill the president, but ended up accidentally killing the archbishop. While trying to escape the pursuing police, Swagger runs into an FBI agent named Nick. Swagger tricks him and then leaves with Nick's gun and car. However, before going, he says that he was framed and Timmons is also involved in it. Timmons finds Nick and tells everyone that Swagger is on the run in an FBI vehicle. Swagger gets pursued by police cars and helicopters, but he manages to hide himself and uses an emergency kit inside the car to bandage his wounds. Swagger is unable to hide forever and gets spotted, so to escape his pursuers, he drives into a river. The cops found the car, but not Swagger, as he had already swum and reached the shore. Swagger then steals a car and sets out to find out the truth. Meanwhile, the FBI officers are all upset as Nick was unable to capture Swagger despite Swagger's injuries. Nick tries to tell everyone that Swagger told him that he was innocent and he was set up, but they don't believe him. On the other hand, Swagger goes to a store and buys some emergency medical supplies after cutting its power supply, so he won't be identified. After treating himself again, he resumes his journey and visits his late friend Donnie's widow, Sarah. She allows him in and he apologizes for not visiting her earlier. Sarah helps clean his wounds and even removes the bullet from his body. In the meantime, Nick digs deeper into the case as he believes something is wrong because the facts don't add up. He discusses this with his fellow officer who advises him to follow Swagger instead of wasting his time. However, Nick can't believe that a highly skilled sniper like Swagger will miss his target. He gets further suspicious because the ballistics report arrived 10 minutes after the shooting when the location was still under lockdown. His doubts become facts when he learns that Officer Timmons was killed shortly after the incident in an attempted robbery. Nick continues investigating the case and believes that Swagger was indeed framed for the murder by someone else. Meanwhile, Swagger learns that Johnson and his men killed his dog, so he gets furious and decides to make them all pay for their crimes. He then apologizes to Sarah for not being able to save her husband's life, but she slaps him, saying that he is not to blame for it as Donnie knew the risks when he joined the army. Sarah then hands him Donnie's sniper rifle and offers her full support. 
Swagger then asks her to meet Nick to exchange information on the case. Sarah hands over the information they have on Johnson, and Nick starts following Swagger's leads. However, Johnson's men soon learn that he is trying to get information on them, and if he keeps searching, he might uncover the whole truth, so they must stop him at all costs. They abduct Nick and take him to a secret location where they plan to kill him while staging the whole scene as a suicide. However, before they can succeed in their plans to kill Nick, Swagger comes to his rescue and kills everyone. Nick then travels with Swagger to Tennessee, where they pay a visit to an elderly man. Swagger inquires about the expert who can make a shot from beyond a mile, and the old man answers that Michael Sander is a man skilled enough to make such long-distance shots. Swagger sets out to find this shooter, and on the other hand, Johnson anticipates this visit, so he also sends his men to have a nice welcome party for Swagger. They also find out about Sarah and decide to abduct her to blackmail Swagger. Swagger and Nick visit a large hardware store and stock up on supplies. Swagger instructs Nick on operating a sniper rifle and forces him to practice. Johnson's men arrive at Sarah's house, but she is prepared. She uses a shotgun and tries to resist. However, she could not defeat them all, and in the end, she gets apprehended by the armed men. They then try to extract Swagger's location from her. Johnson meets with a senator who is also involved in framing Swagger, and he requests the senator to help him get some trained men to find and kill Swagger. The senator agrees as they all realize how dangerous Swagger is. On the other hand, Swagger and Nick arrive at Sandor's house. Swagger instructs Nick to stay behind and give him cover while he goes and investigates Sandor himself. Swagger takes out the guards and then enters the house. He finally meets Sandor, who tells him Johnson's true plans. The president was never the target, as the real target was the archbishop, who was going to tell the whole world how Americans committed genocide to build an oil pipeline in Ethiopia. The easiest approach to assassinate the archbishop was to make it appear as a failed assassination attempt on the president, as no one would suspect them. They knew Swagger as he and Donny were covering their group that massacred people in Ethiopia. Swagger then inquires about Johnson, but Sandor is unaware of his real name. He tells Swagger that he worked for Meacham. He then kills himself. Nick assists Swagger in taking out the soldiers, and they blow up the whole place using gas bombs that they had earlier planted. Nick calls the FBI and tells them that he has Swagger in custody. Swagger then contacts Johnson, who threatens to kill Sarah, and Swagger counters this threat by telling him that he has a recording of Sandor's confession. They both decide on a meeting location, and Johnson agrees to meet, but wants to see him from a long distance away. Swagger, in return, asks for Meacham's presence at the meeting. Afterward, they all arrive at the meeting spot, but when Swagger comes out, he is shot by a hidden sniper. However, this was just a ploy to find the location of their sniper, and in reality, it wasn't Swagger, but Nick, who came wearing a bulletproof vest. Swagger then kills the other sniper and comes toward them. Nick and Swagger free Sarah and wait for the FBI to arrive there. However, before the FBI can arrive there, Swagger destroys the recording, as he thinks it will not benefit any of them. After some time, Swagger is summoned to a meeting at the Department of Justice. The Attorney General hears the case, and Nick is also present along with Johnson. While greeting Swagger, Nick hands him a bullet, and he hides it. Swagger then shows everyone his gun, quickly puts the bullet Nick gave him into it, and points it toward Nick. He asks Nick if he trusts him, and then shoots him, but nothing happens, and everyone is surprised. He then reveals that whenever he leaves his house, he always removes the firing pin from his gun. Since no one tampered with his gun while it was in the FBI's custody, he definitely couldn't have used it to kill the Archbishop. Swagger then claims that Johnson is the one who should be prosecuted for his crime, but the Attorney General is unable to do anything as he has no jurisdiction over any crime Johnson may have committed in another country. The Attorney General then informs Swagger that justice isn't always served fairly. Later, Johnson and his team celebrate his victory, but Swagger comes as an uninvited guest and starts killing them one by one. They try their best to save themselves, but are no match for an enraged soldier with nothing to lose. He takes them all out and leaves after blowing up the whole place, so no evidence is left behind. Swagger then gets in a car with Sarah and leaves. 
Let me know what you think about this movie in the comments below. And if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.